Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Winning Mondays, where every Monday we dive deep into the stories and the strategies of the Malaysia top real estate professionals. My name is Nicholas, and I am your Winning Monday host, and I'm ready to kickstart with you your week with more insights and inspirations from the very best in the business. Welcome to all of you who are in Zoom with me and also for those who are live on the Facebook with us. If you don't mind, I would like you to just do these one actions right now to do a share, like and comment into our Facebook uh, live right now so that more people will get to uh, watch this live when we feature our two professionals uh, today, June Go and also Jacqueline Chu. Before I welcome them, uh, today I would like both uh, I would like to showcase their videos introductions first yeah please share this link live on Facebook yeah hi I'm Jacqueline Chu it is a great honor to be the recipient of Terra State Residential Rent of the Year 2023 by MIA joining a client as a negotiator is the best decision in my career path I work harder than usual surviving and thriving in this industry. I'm achieving good results in my career with the support of ITRI platform. Thanks to all my family, colleagues, my life partner Maxchin in this wonderful journey. I'm deeply honoured to receive the Real Estate Negotiator of the Year. This milestone highlights the dedication and passion I bring to my real estate career. Thank you to all my clients for your trust and support. Thank you my admins, my staff, my family members. Each transaction and interaction has driven me to excel. This award belongs to you as much as it does to me. Thank you again for believing in me. Thank you for the good video for both of them. And let's join me to give them the warmest welcome to these uh, virtual sessions. Uh, June and Jacqueline, welcome both of you. Welcome to Winning Mondays. I'm so happy to have this conversation with both of you. That's uh, Thank you for uh, accepting my uh, invitations to be part of this. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm June Gao from ASP Property Penang. Good morning, June. Morning, Jacqueline. Good morning, everyone. Jacqueline Chu here from IKR Reality Ipoh. Okay, it's great. It's, it's my honor to have uh, both of you uh, today where we want to today, we want to unpack your journeys you know, so that our listeners are so that we can really listen to your drive, your dedications, and the dynamics of your success in the real estate uh, industry. Before anything else, uh, we, we kickstart, we'd like you uh, both to do an honor to introduce uh, yourself. Uh, briefly tell us your background in the real estates and uh, what initially uh, drew you to the real estate industry and how has your passion evolved since then? Yeah, maybe you can start with uh, June. Oh, hi, good morning. I'm June Gaw from ESP Properties Penang. Okay, I started my real estate journey about 15 years ago. Uh, it's a humble beginning. I also started to do a residential rental mm -hmm. and slowly doing uh, residential projects and uh, back end about three years back, I think a lot of my clients are asking me whether I'm, uh, am I eligible to help them market their lands, factories or warehouses. So that's why I started to do uh, industrial projects uh, through ESP platform. So it's only about three years ago that you started uh, industrial? Yeah, yeah, it's three years ago I started to uh, in involve myself into uh, industrial uh, projects. Yeah, I always say this that uh, most of the agents that I interview, uh, once they have been uh, in, in the residentials for a period of time, then they will eventually move to uh, the industrials and, 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 the, and the land as well. And I think everyone would always want to know that how, how can they actually transit from residential to industrial? Later, we'll ask you these questions. How do you actually make that transition? And many actually want to ask this question. Even last week when I uh, interviewed uh, Elvin, uh, in Malacca, so that even on the residential and my, my latest text with him that he told me that I'm already into industry right now. Yeah, so everyone is moving towards that. Okay, let's hear from Jacqueline. You know, could you introduce yourself a little bit more so that we can know you? Hi, Hi everyone. Good morning. So Jacqueline here from Accurity. So previously, I'm a construction background uh, as a quantity surveyor. But after I have working for very long, like five years, I only find out myself is more to human touch. Like. 
I like to going out to meet client instead of facing like heavy load of paperwork. Lah. So mm. uh, I started four years ago. I just quit my job and start uh, real estate full time directly. Yeah. And I started with a project until today. And because of uh, after again the popularity throughout these four years, so this year was starting with some of the sub sale with uh, introduction and referral for friends, family, and clients. Uh. Yeah. And you're only in the, in the industry for four years? Ah, four years. Basically, yeah, just like three years plus only. Three years plus. Yeah, so I think one thing I learned over here is like success belong to everyone. So it doesn't mean that you have to be long enough in the industry in order to win uh, to win the awards uh, in, in the national level. So I think uh, for Jacqueline, you need three years plus in the industry and then you become the uh, you become the residential rent, no, uh, uh, para rent of the, of the year. And for even for June, no, only like uh, close to uh, four years in the, in, uh, three years plus in the industrial uh, segment as well, then you become a champion in that segment. Very good. Thank you for very inspiring in a very short period of time. So success belongs to um, everyone. June, uh, one question for you just now, I think it's like following from what I've just mentioned that uh, transition from residential to industrial, right? Could you give us some tips? How can an agent transit from uh, residential to industrial in your opinion? Uh, actually, doing industrial is a new for thing. Okay, because Penang has a lot of uh, industrial projects. Lah. So I say is uh, we are semicon uh, industry like uh, the bulk of the orange. We are doing more on uh, semicon. So due, due, due to the trade war, there are a lot of uh, overseas clients that coming in from China and Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They looking into the industry like uh, lands or factories to do their business. So what I can do is actually doing industry is not difficult at all. So you need to know the land area, the build up, the usable area that can be converted into clean room or warehouses, all that. You need to know the specification of the industry. Then you start to uh, how say, propose to your client. Then you slowly you will get the, uh, how say, the database from your sellers and when you advertise, through the um, iProperty, property gurus or age and your personal page, all that, you can gather a lot of organic leads and your clients will directly find you. It needs years to accumulate, of course, but uh, slowly you have the client, they'll always come, come back to you. Interesting. Still doing, yeah. All, all the things that you share, only catch one thing, it's not, it's not that hard that you mentioned. It's not difficult at all. It's yeah, it's not difficult at all. at all. It's quite similar to doing uh, residential, but the size is bigger. So yes. it's a bigger ticket items, right? And the earning is also more lucrative. From uh, it's not difficult to do industry. You say, how, how am I going to convert from uh, residential or commercial into industry? I said, it's not difficult at all. Right. All you need to do is the, gather all the database from your seller. Mm -hmm. uh, and then try to advertise the matchmaking and then uh, go for viewing, closing the deal, all that. It's not, sim uh, it's not difficult at all. Okay, it's not difficult at all. And it's actually quite similar to residential. So as long as like there's a similar style of you booking on the residential, you can also put the yeah. same mechanics and uh, work in the industry as well. Okay, that's that's good. Let, let's, let's hear yes. from uh, uh, Jacqueline. So, I mean like, as, as you win the para residential real estate negotiator of the year so this is a significant achievement for yourself no in just about three year plus uh in the in the industry so can you share with us what does this actually these recognitions mean to you personally and also professionally um yeah it's actually a very big recognition uh, because uh i changed from my job which is a uh, which my family recognized that job is only the right job which mm. we study for university, ma. Yeah. So like, why you so wasted and then change to real estate? But actually, I think a lot of people that have a, uh, misunderstanding. Actually, real estate also a pro professional job. It's just that they are, uh, pro in real estate, they doesn't need you to have any qualification. Yeah. So that thing is not a professional job. But actually, when you study for the REA. There is a diploma and everything, the syllabus also is similar with a 
it's a university uh course and subject as well mm. and it's quite so I think that is uh I want to prove to my family yeah so it's like a real estate negotiator is actually not a you know it's actually is a professional job and it's a very good recognition uh, uh, for me personally and yeah to prove to my friends and family and through the profession I think it's a recognition to my professional and I feel it's also an appreciation to all my clients uh, which they have support supporting me throughout these years and they feel uh, very happy also because I'm the servicing agent to mm -hmm. them that choose and get this award as well. So I want my clients to feel proud also. Lah, and I will be this industry very long. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we are also very proud of you, right? As, as you mentioned that there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about this industry, you know, like agent, anybody can be an agent. You just mm -hmm. attend like a 2D SEC course uh, and you can become agents. And, but in fact, uh, there's already have university who actually, uh, it's not new, you know, it's a long time ago that university has already offered courses on real estate uh, for real estate professionals. There are a lot of things to, to learn and definitely this industry is, uh, I mean, like the professionals, uh, because they did use the word agents, right? many many people thought, just think that they are freelancers, they, they just do it. But in fact, you can be very serious and very professional in this space. That's yes, well. Good that you have proof to the, the rest and especially to your families, right? Hey, you no, know, like this is don't play play. So this is a real, real stuff that you're doing and can really meet, uh, make a lot of money from, from there as well. Yeah. Thanks, Jacqueline. What about you? you know, how, what does that winning these three awards mean to you? Uh, winning three awards, we need a very good platform, uh, mm. teamwork, and back end support. And my clients are, uh, how may I say, it, the, they trust in me mm. so that they can uh, ask me to uh, find the warehouses, the factories, or the lands that they request. So it's actually not my personal efforts. It's all from teamwork and the belief and the trust from client. Yeah, it's 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 more than that, you know. It's just beyond beyond you. Yeah, I, I'm happy to, to to know that even though as as you win it, uh, you give a lot of recognitions back to your team and also company as as well. It's not just you; it's also the platform that actually have helped you to achieve the similar success. Yeah, because when I I joined ESP, they really taught me a lot of uh, industry techniques. Uh, thanks to uh CEO Eltrin Tan, mm -hmm. uh parents, Derek, uh, Dr. Adrian, they really put in effort to train us. They gave us the industrial tour from north to KL to the south and ensure we can manage not just in Penang, but we can explore more towards like KL or Johor so that our clients, if they want to expand their business to the mid, uh, middle or the south, we can able to, uh, how may I say, to, to propose the land or the factories to them. So we are not just doing business in purely in Penang, but nationwide. Yeah, that's that's important. That's that's how you told me that hey, you know, you actually uh, travel to to KL on a monthly basis. Yeah, yeah, we should catch up one one of those those days when you're in. Uh, can in can Kenya. no problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move to uh Jacqueline back. Uh, could you share with us the uh the trends in the para residentials or markets right now? Oftentimes, we only talk about in most of the interview that we have, we mostly featured the, the agents in, in Central, in, in KL Slam Mall, in Camp Valley. And we really hardly hear uh, the trends. Uh, last week, we talked about the trends in, uh, in the Southern, right? This, this, this week is where we want to hear, you know, what's the trend up there, right, in, in the Northern uh, parts? Can you share with us your, your view on the para-residentials uh, market? Oh, I think para residential change a lot lah, especially uh because last time they say uh people cannot cannot develop. So <laughs> okay. they say very slow or anything, but and if you investment wise, people cannot lah, this lah, that lah. So but actually now, especially after MCO lah, uh people is uh emerging the tourism. It's become a tourism now. And mm. as you can see, the Shen Hotel also being bought by YTL. Mm, yes. And the somewhere there, they also coming back to make it the somewhere shopping mall. And 
They even have the Airbnb project. They have built, completed, and they're planning to have a second phase for the Airbnb project. And another hotel is coming also. So uh, this is what the many people staying in Ipoh or they are coming from Ipoh, they doesn't aware of it until uh, it really happening, uh, which a lot of uh, uh, white from outside is investing mm -hmm. in uh, Para Ipoh. And we also can heard that those Tato 3, they will have some presentation, which there is a, a factory coming in in the uh, area which haven't developed yet. So all these things has effect on the job opportunities. Lah, mm -hmm. Which uh, so I think there's a there's become a very good in five years development in Ipoh. Lah. And actually Ipoh, the house price they increased tremendously and not compatible with the salary people here nowadays. And that's why we need to change the target audience. When the target audience change, our uh, marketing strategy totally change. We need to learn a new marketing strategy on doing it. Yeah. When, when you say that the, the target market change, are you talking about because of the salary couldn't cope with the, the, the rise of the price in in couldn't, Ipoh? Couldn't, so couldn't. The longer target people in Ipoh to actually buy the properties, are, are you saying that you're actually targeting people who are actually out of, out of Ipoh right now? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if last year, there is uh, a lot of uh, below 400, but after that, this year, it's no longer 400 because... No more 400. <laughs> okay. Uh, can say like 10, only 10% 10 below 400 for a project. Uh, the rest also, uh, for double story terrace, you easily can find and all easily is like 500 plus and minus. Wow. Uh, yes. And this is not compatible with the majority of the salary uh, which they have nowadays. So we need to change the target audience already. Uh, so there will be lots more those out of uh, uh, Ipoh who probably uh, uh, from the other states are probably coming in either for investments uh, investment for Airbnb project and also uh, I majorly target on those uh, who are Ipoh. They are from Ipoh as well, but they're working in outstation uh, or in foreign country. It's good. Thanks. Thanks for opening up for, for us to really see that hey, no, there's actually a lot of potential in Ipoh right now. So uh, for those of audience who are listening on the Facebook Live and on Zoom, please Right, take this opportunity to relook into your investments uh, area, not just in Clan Valley, but also in places like uh Ipoh. And let's let's talk about Penang. Okay, let's talk about Penang right now. So, what is the market's uh a trend right now for the industrial market? Well, are you still in, in residentials or you're fully focused on uh, industrial right now, June? Uh my my personal sales is purely on industrial and corporate deals. My teams are still doing housing projects. Yeah, we so, we are actually in Penang, yeah. uh, quite vibrant. Okay, mm -hmm. as you can see, we have a lot of our uh, Airbnb projects at this moment. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of our uh, visitors coming to Penang, and of course, the residential projects is uh, ranging from uh minimum seven hundred thousand and above for mm -hmm. one thousand square feet. Okay, and industrial wise. There are a lot of industrial parks that are coming up, okay, like um from Batukawan, the uh the PDC one, and private one is the Bertam Technology Park that is quite welcoming from the China investor. The price price is about 85 onwards to 95, quite reasonable because all at those who are nearer to the Batukawan, the Baudo one, it's about 130 per square feet. As you can see in Penang, uh, we have both. Uh, semicon industry, logistics, and uh, healthcare. And that, that's the reason that boosting up our residential as well, because when you have uh, more industry projects and more workers, and more people needs to buy a house. So uh, technically, our residential project is quite welcoming, plus the, uh, the investment product like the uh, suites, the guarantee re uh, return, also very... <laughs> A lot in this. A, a lot of this now uh, guarantee returns. Everyone is <laughs> doing the same. Okay, and um, lands and factories. 
uh, quite a number. Lah. Then uh, moving, moving to the north is Keda. So Keda is like a compound, like um, if Penang do not have enough uh, industrial land, they will uh, compromising Penang. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, cheaper industrial land in the north as well. Okay. So you also cover that as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cover uh, Penang, Keda, and Para. Oh, even Para. <laughs> okay, then you got for, for, for those, Because you, you have to see what the uh, industry players are doing. So if they are doing uh, more on heavy industry, they have to move to Para, Kemunting, or Urun. Mm -hmm. uh, Bukit Selembau in uh, Kedah. So towards uh, healthcare and semicon will be in Penang State majority. Then we have to go for the Department of uh, Environment to see whether the uh, industry are polluted or not. So that's why we need to uh, analyze the clients, uh, what are they doing, and then we have to bring the client to the correct industrial park. Yeah, I think the right requirement is uh, is so crucial uh, for, for industrial. So it's like once the requirement is right and then you you actually have that that listings of the, the factory and all for them, I think the, the matchmaking can become uh, quite easily done. Yeah, if you bring the heavy industry player to light or medium, they couldn't get the DOE approval. Eventually, you fill their project. So you must know your client's requirement and then uh, send them to the correct industrial place and to help them to set up their business successfully. This is our duty. Yes, that's your duty. Yeah, I like it. I <laughs> that's, that's the duty to, to make sure. And uh, when we talk about industrial, it's actually because of that, uh, the, the size of not just the deals, right? And uh, the number of people that's going to work uh, over there, they eventually they will be able uh, you actually have to boost the residential sales as well at the same time. Yes, exactly. Either new rental or, or, or sale. Yes. Okay, okay it's great. Uh, Jacqueline, so like, uh, I think we, we understand like in a small town, like, uh, maybe, actually, in fact, it's not small. I say it's small because I come from a Kampa, Kampa small town. Well, that's, that's my hometown. So like uh, for, for me, when, when I grown up, going to Ipoh is luxury, you know, like uh, usually in a small town, when you go to Ipoh, it's considered the, the big town. And I believe that building a strong relationship uh, is very crucial in, uh, in our industry. How do you build uh, trust and rapport with new clients? And especially right now, you have to re-strategize. The market price is different right now. You 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 have to maintain this relationship for longer term. Um. Okay. So for for my wife, lah, usually I think starting from purchasing the house, then I will be very genuine and honest to them. So because I know that uh they have a planning want to come back to Ipo for retirement or earn for good. So I will be uh, knowing what's their industry they are doing in foreign country or in our station. So I will be giving them the, uh, let them know the insight about the IPO and which area is the, uh, is, is, is the best opportunity for them to set up their business when they come back in IPO. So uh, I have a group of uh, clients that are really planning to come back to IPO, have few already come back. So uh, they will be informing me when they come back to set up their business. So mm -hmm. I'm the, the one who support them, the first one. <laughs> and yeah, direct the, my friends, re refer my friends come to have, uh, to bong chan them as well. Lah. So mm -hmm. maybe become, we also become a friends already after, after they purchasing the house. So maybe I think it's more uh, honest, genuine and let them feel like welcome them back to Ipo like this. Huh? Yeah, and especially uh Ipo is full of good foods, right? So it's never never hard to never mm -hmm. tough to actually uh host them, bring them for good food and then eventually have uh, have the business discussions uh, yeah. from there. Because especially these few years la, I have seen a lot of the youngster that are coming back to set up their business. So you mean that you see a trend that a lot of young people are actually coming back to import to set up business? Yeah, correct. Really, a lot. Especially those cafe, la, cafe, cafe like this become more. That's yeah. a lot of cafe actually uh, booming in, in Ipoh itself, right? Yes. 
good good to know that there's actually uh, more young people. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the biggest struggles with with all this uh town is that many actually after they study they actually move to uh the KL to to continue or they go overseas, right? And the business opportunity in Ipoh is is not so. Uh, encouraging at, at that period of time but I'm happy to 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 know that right now the, the scene have actually changed more people are actually eyeing and they have maybe they might not want to have too fast pace in in, uh, in KL Slang that a lot of them actually moving the, the trend in uh, in Ipoh as well so we, ha we have a, what, a trainer Sifu Korinta so he also resides in Ipoh right we one day like, actually can have a conversation with him so he traveled uh, to to uh uh, to, to KL uh, on a weekly basis to be able to to coach our agents and in fact that's over the weekend he would then have his uh, uh, time and in Ipoh because he just loved that uh, that time yeah <laughs> good yeah June for about for yourself how do you build a rapport and trust with your client especially new clients what strategies do you use especially for industrial uh, basically you have to uh, have um, a lot of our uh, readings and research on the industry. So uh, provide, um, how we say, the reports, FDI reports, all that um, technical reports for their requirement. And then you have to analyze through what are the, uh, uh, what is the, their requirement, uh, like the industrial park that they have to go in and uh, any um, uh, government sectors like media, media, media that they can support them. NREA they can provide a uh, grant for them for the long term business. They normally will talk about the um what are the special things that you can provide for your for this industrial project that you propose to them. Okay, so we have to have built a very good rapport with the invest Penang, the um media, media, all that. And then um, make sure they can lend their business successfully because the clients are from overseas. You have to ensure they can set up their plans successfully, get all the uh, finance from the um, banks and the grants from the government sector. So it's not only purely selling lands or factories. You have to look into various sectors. Are we able to connect them to the correct um, people? Uh, departments and help them to uh, land successfully in Malaysia. There's a lot of things to do. <laughs> uh, actually, what, one thing I learned from you from what you have just shared is is, is just beyond building relationships. It's not so much about just that, but I think for yourself to be a professionals, to know your to know your your business, to know your professions well and know your staff well, I think it's extremely important. Yeah. Yes, shared because so much work actually uh be behind that like yes a lot of work yeah. to be done yes we have to send in proposals to them okay uh explain to them why they need to uh expand the business to Malaysia okay so what can you provide besides a uh, real estate agent to propose a, 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 a space or a land to them so who are you working with the government sector the private sector such as the bank all that are they able to provide the finance for them to purchase the land, to construct the factory, and then to get their business uh, starting up? So that's a lot of things to need to have a very good rapport beside the clients, but the bankers, the government sectors, uh, officers, and so forth. Well, how, how do you cope with so many of all these things? Even just for one deal, right? There's so many things that you actually need to look into. Uh, okay, how, how do you manage on this relationship? Uh, Relationship is actually it's a time management. You need to work with, right? Yeah. Um, you have to go out more often to participate in the workshop and then getting to know more people. And if you want to expand your business, you must work really, really good with the commercial corporate lawyers and commercial bankers that can approve your loan, not just local but overseas as well. So you have to have those type that are professionals that they can assist your 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 business. It's not about me. It's about uh, how I say a supply chain. Okay, mm. if you do not have a, a good lawyer, a good banker to assist the business, I don't think the deal will go through, right? If today they are purchasing a hundred million deal, who are they going to find the finance from? So you must build a rapport, not just your client, but the bankers, the lawyers, then really can make the deal. 
goes through. Yeah, this is how you actually set yourself apart from the rest. Of the, this is how you set yourself apart from the rest of the other agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah yes, I'm, I'm not just crazy. selling lands only. I, I'm not just selling you spaces, but I need to ensure that uh, from time to time you have to check on your client. Hey, are you able to get the finance from which banker or what? Uh, which bank can provide better rates all that and uh, what is happening latest in the market all that you have to publish the details all that so they are quite they, it's a word of mouth once you get the deal done they'll introduce a lot of uh, clients to you okay it's good later we're going to ask both of you how is your day going to look like you know like uh, there's so many things that you actually have to do just now uh, June when you talk about uh, it's not that difficult at all right seems like now <laughs> you have to rethink of what you have just shared just now okay later I'm going to ask both of you like um, how is your day like as, a, as an Asian before I ask that question let you have some time to think about it so uh uh, ja Jacqueline, can you share with us like what are the some of the uh, innovative marketing strategies that you have uh, developed uh, for yourself that you actually make yourself set apart and stand out among all your competitors out there? Any strategies that you, you can share with us? Um, because uh, I'm a project sales leader, so my focus is all mainly on the project. So my customer, 99% is from marketing, online marketing. So, 99% from online marketing. 99. Wow. 99. Yeah, because I, I'm not good at root show. Lah. I cannot shout one. My sound is very soft. <laughs> Nobody you, can listen. You do need to shout in the root show, right? Uh, we need to call, call the client. You yeah. need to call the clients, okay. Yeah, right. so I'm not good with this. So I will be putting all my time all on marketing, online marketing. So like last time is like, uh, okay, so like doing live, shooting video with myself personally, talk mm -hmm. in front of the video, and like more advanced uh, Facebook advertisement strategy. Like, it's like the but marketing funnel retargeting. Wow. It's not simple like last time. Like, uh, because last time you can have a simple image or video just to advertise straight to the audience. You just boost, you can easily get the clients. But nowadays, a lot of... Uh, uh, everybody know this trend, so need to be like more advanced in Facebook marketing like this. Lah. Can you share with us one advanced technique that you, you have proven to work? Uh, you mean the marketing strategy? Uh, yeah. uh, like in terms of you talk about like Facebook advanced uh, strategies that you actually use, right? Yeah, you, maybe we just, we just like, we have a, we have a very informative video, like if talk about the Airbnb, like Airbnb in Ipoh, so we explain in a video which took about like two to three minutes. So whoever who have viewed more than 30% or until how many seconds of this video, they could see another of my advertisement, which, yeah, so this will, the whole fish, so we will catch the very potential fish yeah, you qualify them first. Yeah. <laughs> to see another another advertisement or something like landing page. You mm. let them to have all the information go through first before they are uh, coming in to our customer service. Yeah, this, this is where in, in the space of uh, marketing, we talk about that we have the uh, level of awareness first. Then this is where of top of the mind uh, uh, of awareness. So you're actually building the awareness. Then you actually qualify them to the uh, to the medium uh, of, of their mind funnels. Then only that the one who, that you just, uh, you just mentioned, right? If they actually watch this video of yours two or three minutes, if more than, if they actually probably watch more than 55 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Then you go to see the, the next level of content. Then you then yeah. pre-qualify them. Yeah, yeah, this also can prevent a lot of uh, filtering work, which they have seen all this information. Uh, because uh, Airbnb is a very, very uh, new trend in people. Mm. And when it's too new for them, they need time to digest. So before they come, they digest first. Uh, okay. So when yeah. you say 99%, right, how, how many kind of uh, leads uh, or appointments that you are actually uh, gaining from this uh, on online advertising that you actually do. Uh, leads ah, uh, hmm. leads. I think, I think one year I think got one thousand to two thousand like this ah. Uh. 
one to two thousand leads in a year. That's how you actually qualify them and actually bring in uh them. Oh, no, no, I mean before maybe one to two thousand that click in, but not mm -hmm. majority of them that will be reply lah. Okay, so impressions and then you have the unique clicks. Yeah, correct. Okay, so one to two thousand you're talking about unique clicks, yeah. Uh, the the contact list. The contact. the contact list. So you're able to garner at least uh, close to yeah. one to two thousand uh, contacts uh, leads. For, for all the for all the projects I have done, uh, total up like this. Okay, that's that's good. Thanks for sharing with us. That I, I know that uh, if any one of you uh, who are watching with us on Facebook Live and also on Zoom, if you have any questions in regards to this uh, um, in, in innovative uh, marketing strategies you want to ask, uh, Jacqueline, feel free to just type in uh, any questions that we can actually bring up to our uh, panel speaker. All right, uh, June, what about yourself? What, what sort of uh, marketing strategies work for you for industrial? Okay, I set up my page uh, about 10 years ago. So I slowly gather the organic leaks uh, from the posting that I posted. Mm. So normally when I posted a land or factories, they will immediately call me up and say, hey, I'm interested to have a look at the factories or lands. So that's that's the reason why you need to create your own personal page. Uh. From time to time, we gather the, all the organic leaks. Uh. Uh, we do have posting that's for uh, residential projects. But for industrial, I think all the clients is from your, uh, how may I say, um, you have to go out to attend the meeting, workshop, like a, a corporate functions and slowly to gather all your database from there. And slowly you have the database you propose to the clients and then the clients will give you more leads. Because when you have clients that have factories or warehouses or land, they mm. have that type of uh, properties as well. They will say, hey, June, how about you help me to market my uh, factory? I want to dispose it and to get another bigger one. So that's how the business goes on. So uh, I would personally uh, recommend you have your own page. Okay. And in start, I'm not uh, really, I'm still an old fashioned because uh, I think people are doing lands or factory. They still rely on more on Facebook uh, reach, I think. Yeah, so that Pardon is the yeah. and so uh, if you are doing residential, I think uh Insta and Sao Hong Su, all that is quite good. Yeah. yeah. But for 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 traditional approach of lanes, like factory, you still need to do a lot of proposal, telling them uh what is so good about this factory, all that. Uh then you have to convince them to come for viewing. And after viewing, and you need to do closing. Of course, you need to have a banker to support them. Yeah, that's why. Besides relation, good relationship with clients, you need to have a good relationship with bankers. <laughs> so what, what has worked for you, uh, June, is basically that networking uh, sessions, you got to be, basically go out there and meet up with, with, uh, with clients. So what is the one, uh, one networking sessions or uh, events that you, you would recommend for any industrial agents to, to attend to get more exposure for themselves? Uh, I think MIEA organized a lot of uh, good uh, message functions mm -hmm. you need to involve. And besides uh, the owners, sell, uh, the sellers or the buyers, but you need to have a good relationship with the agents as well from various in, uh, agency. Yeah, you can co-work with them. Am I right? If you have a good listing, but why not share with them? We yes, can work up together. Again, another strategy is talk about the beauty of uh, core agencies uh, to work very closely together. In yeah, fact, yeah, yeah. not your competitors, but they are all your good good friends that you can actually... Yeah, eat. yeah. We are now, now in this era, we do not have enemies. We have friends, <laughs> more friends. <laughs> yeah, more collaboration from always, different agencies. Yeah, not only in Malaysia, we also have a core agency from Singapore and uh, China, all that. When, they, when their clients need something, we also need to collaborate. Yes. Yeah, it is so important to to really expand our our network beyond our own agencies to really see you know best rather than yeah any, yeah last time is every agency is scared of everyone and you will try to avoid you no know, now we we'll work uh collaboration together uh it's like in this era nothing to be high you have to share your resources and then make sure everyone can earn this piece of a uh, big pie. Yeah, actually the market is just so big, right? And it's yeah, it's so big. It's like last year point. the total transaction is forty eight billion. How hmm. much you can get from the market? So big. Yeah. <laughs> Don't compete. Yeah, share resources and close the deal together. 
Yes, that that is so important. So like, I'm I'm very happy to to actually have meeting more and more uh agents that are actually very open minded to really uh collaborate. Uh, uh, and not just about Malaysia, yeah. you have to book towards like um overseas yeah. client. Yeah. It's good. Now now we have to go back to this one question. So how's your day look like, uh, Jacqueline? Right, as 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 the para uh industrial rent of the year. So how's your day look like? Don't tell us. One day when you wake up until the end of the day, how does it look like for you? You mean after the MIA award? How no, no. So it's like we're talking about uh your day, no? When you wake up until you uh you you sleep, right? So what actually happened? What kind of activities you actually uh do so that people can really understand? Oh, if let's say I, I want to be successful like uh like Jack Lynch, right? Oh, this is how her day look like. Oh, okay. So uh, after I've been working for three years plus, basically I have gained a lot of uh, client purchase the house. So I think uh, 30%, if, if I talk about 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mm. So I think I received 30% of the time is my customer service call. Customer service call 30% of the time. So from what time to what time you usually do this? Responding um, to them, is it? Responding the to call that doesn't they doesn't limit any time. They have so, any problem, they will call directly. The okay, message. all right. So I will solve their problem maybe uh, 30% of the time. And mm. then uh, I will assign a time just to review my advertisement. And, and I will assign a time also to communicate with my clients, those new clients. I need to... New client. You see the difference, right? Commit servicing client and also new client. And also yes. looking at your ads. Okay, good. Yes. So it's getting uh, more busy than before because when starting, it's only new clients. So now you need to service customer service and also new clients' communication with them in order to have uh, coming weeks, you have appointments. Yeah, to in order to have a closing as well. So uh, reviewing of the marketing. And last is uh, I have starting this year with the subseal listing collection. Uh. Mm. So this is also quite challenging to me because uh subseal listing collection is actually take time also. <laughs> and uploading, yeah. So I think need to work. I thought need to work less less already after a few years, but no, <laughs> it's not true. I need to work more than that. You get more busy when you go into the subseal, huh? Yeah, because when expanding I need to do both works and at the same time also uh, building a team. So maybe you need to assign more time to more tasks. Yeah, uh, so not, and, not just for personal sales and also you're, you're building a team as well. Yes, correct. Uh, things like this. So starting maybe we'll uh, starting to find maybe intern or they will doing for works like marketing works. Those minor mar marketing works like this. Okay, it's good, right? So what about June? How's your day look like? Oh, um, my day. I, I, slept, I sleep quite early. About 10 p.m. I sleep already and I wake up at 6.30. So I like to take a, a snapshot of the sunrise <laughs> from oh, my house. Okay. okay. And I always tell universe, ah, oh, it's a brand new day. We start afresh and let's close the creative deals today. Yeah. Start with, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I listen to the uh spotify the many many fashion all that to make mm -hmm. my mind more um positive i start eating my breakfast the affirmations for your day mm. yes and then i normally i seldom go to office because i i'm meeting my clients more often okay my office uh, means will help me to do all the proposals and i would say oh today i have a viewing i have a meeting with client can you help me to sort out the paperwork. And then my task is going to view with my client to do presentation, to do closing. And I have a very good team of uh, administration officer that in my office that helped me to do all the paperwork and follow up. Yes. Wow. Okay. So you're, you're very clear of what you're good at and what you should be focusing on, on doing. Most of the time you do... Uh, in, in one of the training that we always do in, in Calabillums that we, we talk about the 80-20 rules and what is the top 20% of the things and yeah, it's more on job delegations on. and what is your priority yeah that's that's very good I think it's like I'm so happy to see that you know, you're super clear you know so what are the things that your admin can do and your back end can do so that you don't do and you only focus yeah. on the things that 
only you can do. Yeah, right. people want to see my face, then I come yeah. up. <laughs> Yes, yes, is that what you do best? I think that's that's important. Yeah, I, I think uh, job delegation is very important because everyone is so busy, especially I have three children. Of course, they are growing up, but I still need to manage the like work life balance, uh, our family, we have wow. our parents, in laws, children, colleagues. That it's like I, I'm like I have to do a lot of things at the same Never time. Never ending this. Yeah, and this is super mom in action. Yeah. Okay, it's good. There's one question uh, for Jacqueline. For code... Oh, so okay. So this is... Can I have your context? Okay, all right. So this one... Uh, okay, don't worry, Jean. You can actually contact me. Then I actually can uh, share that context uh, with you. All right. So if any questions, feel free to just uh, text it uh, over to me. Then I can uh, ask the, them live uh, as, as well. Okay, come. Let's talk about uh, the challenging deal. Uh, that uh, that you face, you know, but you can keep the the sensitive data uh confidentials and explain to us how you actually successfully uh close this challenging deal, and so what are the top three lessons that you actually learn from there, Jacqueline? Challenging deal, ah. Mm, yeah. Um. Uh, if uh, let's say, uh, client profile those are uh, maybe they are e-commerce. Ah, uh, they are e-commerce then. Uh, first year they bought the house, unable to get success, then I will get the solutions from banker mm -hmm. and ask the client to uh, give me their loan document again, their mm -hmm. profile. So next year, they will come back again to do it. Uh, and maybe another is uh, many, some of the client, maybe when they come to view the house or the projects, they will show like poker face or they will... Uh, no reaction. No From feedback. starting until end, they will be talk bad about the project. Not good, not good, not good, not good. But uh, I think my my job is I want to letting him or her know about how good is this project. Uh, I just like ignore their reactions. Uh. Mm. I, just, uh, I just do my task. I transmit all the information you should know. Uh, I never care about uh, how they say. So, uh, but end up, the client choose to buy. <laughs> so when you don't take it personal, yeah, on all the rejections, all the negativity, but you just continue to be professionals and show what's the best out for, for this property for them. Yeah, I wouldn't have a I, I wouldn't have a mind like, oh, I think he don't like the house, then he wouldn't buy already, la, then I don't want to talk so much anymore. But no, I just like ignore and I just do my job. I transmit what the information I shall I shall transmit to him or her. La. Uh, things like that. Mm, it's good. So the 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 lessons that you 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 learn from uh these few deals. Uh yeah, but I think the most the most legend case I have made is I I met a client from KL and he just come the house to look at the defect that he start doing as a building technology lecturer. And mm. letting his family know what is the workmanship, what is the way of construction is only the is only the correct way. Okay. Because I previously I also study construction. I know yeah, construction yeah. as well. I work in construction as well. So so the way I see him do like this, I feel like this this is the only time that I feel I cannot, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so how do you overcome that? I overcome that. Mm. Uh, I just wake him, talk and finish. <laughs> that's the easiest way. Okay, then let him finish and then you continue. Yeah. yeah. That, that's one question for you. Uh, uh, for Jacqueline. Uh, the question is, Passe Pute is the residential, is the residential demand in these locations good comparing to other locations in Ipoh? So he's asking an advice. Uh, I believe this from Facebook uh, Live. He's mm. asking whether Passe Pute is uh, is in demand whether it is is a uh, good comparing to other locations in Ipoh. So what's your view? Um, Pase Pute is quite near to the town area. I think it's just like five minutes to ten minutes to town area. It's a very good area. It's just that a majority of the house there is a uh, sub sale la. sub sale. Mm. So new project is very less. So in order to buy the sub there, uh, the house there has some age already. Lah. Need to do some uh, touch-up and renovation. Uh, need more cost on that. 
why is that? So overall, I think the question is like, is it uh, is it on high demand? Um, high demand, uh. maybe for people who living there who knows the demand over there, but usually from other area, uh, because people got many area, they wouldn't look at this area when they look at the project. Because this area is majority subsidial. So very less youngster they will notice about this area. They will have many people looking at this as well, but uh most of them are subsidial already. Uh second hand. It's good. Thanks, thanks for sharing your insights, uh, Jacqueline. Over to June. All right. So share with us like uh, you get the industrial deal of the year. Would you want to share with us like uh what's this deal all about and how do you close it? Okay, uh, during last year, I think uh, early of the year, the BYD started to venture into Malaysia market. Mm, BYD. There was a, yeah, BYD was called collab with the Sam Darby. Happened to that, uh, they have a spare parts, uh, they need warehouse. So uh, introduced by Dato Suri, so I then the client that managing their warehouses. So I managed to get the deal too. So that's why I become the industrial renter of the year. <laughs> Wow. It's called uh, when you are ready, you get the deal. Then, so yeah. uh, that warehouse is about uh three hundred more than three hundred thousand square feet, and that's why it's very good uh warehouse, very solid uh, floor load, able to cater up to five times. That's a very rare gem in the market. So that's why the client just have a look and immediately decided to take up the warehouse. So in between, we need to justify the moving in time, how long they need the renovation period, uh, when are they going to commence, and what are the things that I need to provide in between the hand, hand over all that. So um, typically, you need to ensure the clients that always mention land safely into your premise or your space of the land. So you have to ensure if they do not need finance, you make sure the timeline is according to their requirement. And mm -hmm. ensure they, they can able to move in their their, their goods uh, at the right time. And everyone is happy, landlords is happy and clients is happy. Happy how clients, it, happy. How long does it take for you to close that that deal in, in that size? Uh it's quite quite right to have this type of huge warehouses with a very high ah, 300,000 square feet. Yeah, 300,000 square feet. So that's why the client that uh, actually is a wood of Mala, the data series, said, hey, my, my friends want to look for a warehouse. I said, uh, do you have this type of a warehouse hmm. in the market? I said, yeah, yeah, I do have one. That's quite lucky. Wow. So, so we have to have a lot of data lucky, right? bases from yeah. various of the, the, the from warehouses, factories, uh, lands. Actually, different industries have different requirements on the specification of the, 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 the building. So you must know what are their requests so matchmaking and then quickly bring them to have a view and then cut off on the the terms and condition and quickly sign the deal so this is also your years of context right so that when the data three have this uh trust in you and then uh he asks you and then so happened that you also have the the right yeah map. yeah yeah so we i always say that you, when you are free you must go and gather all the databases from your friends or, or you must roam around at the industry area to find the listing that you want. <laughs> yeah, last last week when we uh uh when we interview uh Rachel of the, the Joho Industrial uh rent of the year, that he also she also mentioned that you know, is most of her time is basically uh networking young channel, like uh, spend time and getting to know more people, gathering the requirement. And when the time is right, and then I think that the, the sales will then eventually happen. Yeah, true, true. Well, that's 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 good. Now, like uh, we're gonna go for a quick announcements uh right now. Right after announcements, they I have like uh two two more questions for, for both of you. Uh as as is like uh what would be one key lessons that you you learned in your career that you wish that you have known uh earlier at the start? And what advice would you uh, offer to the newcomers uh, to your industry? And what do you think that they, if they're going to start from scratch, if you are the younger Jude, younger Jacqueline, right? How would you do that uh, so that you, all the lessons that you learned in the past 
uh, three years in industrial and also residential that you're able to pass this uh, level of knowledge uh, to them. All right, so we're going to do a, a quick break for, uh, for announcements right now, and then we will come back uh, to interview both of you. Okay, let's have the announcements. So we have this uh, announcement next Monday, next two Monday, 6 to 7 p.m. in Ridfield uh, headquarters. So did we have a sharing from uh, Sifu Colin Tan, right? So we have trained uh, many, many millions airs in both Malaysia and uh, Singapore. He will be doing a, a sharing. You no, know, feel free to uh, invite your, your friends to be there to hear you know, how you can become a million dollar uh, realtor. Uh, through this uh, sharing. So anyone who are exploring to be in the industry and anyone who are already in the industry want to have the breakthrough uh, in their uh, business. Uh, next is uh, next. Uh, on the 28th of August, we have Business Planning Clinic becoming a millionaire realtor and uh, agency. How you can actually build uh, yourself from an individual contributor to actually set up an agency. So this is for PA and REA. So see CBD training will happening will be happening on the 28th of uh, August, uh, coming Wednesday, 9 to 5 uh, p.m. in Bukit Kiara Equestrian and Country uh, Resort. Um, next, coming up next, uh, on the 3rd of September until 10 of uh, October, we have a five weeks uh, training for Ignite. So these are the uh, all the agents uh, and also professionals who have made it in the industry, we're going to come and share with uh, you on how you can uh, become successful in this industry with these 20 uh, days uh, trainings. So these are the modules. So we have module one, two, uh, three, four, or uh, over five weeks of uh, training. You can basically see over here from uh, how you how to actually uh, start it right uh, for your career to lead generations follow up and transacting the, the business 20 full days uh, training uh, on this. Yep. Uh, next and next week we are uh, happy to have uh, Mabel and also Norman to come and uh, share with us. Uh, first week we actually have uh, first week we have Tony who actually won the million dollar uh, agents uh, slumber uh, rent of the year. Uh, then on the second week on this uh, this month series of NIEA, we, we have interviewed uh, two, two of them, Rachel and also Alvin from the Southern. And today we have uh, Jacqueline and June on the Northern. And on the final uh, week series, we're so happy to have Mabel and uh, Norman who are in the central to share with us the entire market. So that is the entire uh, four weeks of our NIEA uh, series. So this entire month of August, we're going to feature all the uh, winners. Thank you for all the winners who actually uh, willingly uh, spare your time to be with us. Now we go back to June and uh, Jacqueline. I think it's like uh, more, uh, more questions uh, for you, right? As a mentor to the younger uh, agents, right? Uh, what would you, uh, what would you share with them to a younger you, to a younger Jacqueline? What would you share? Advice for them. Uh, to all the. New agent. Yeah, new agents who want to achieve a similar success like you, right? This is your advice to a younger you, right? Yeah, you advise yourself back. How would you advice? advise? Okay, I think uh, as uh, starting, the mindset must be good, lah, which uh, need to be have a very honest and stand on the client's own shoes. Uh, be optimistic, well prepared, and study the house surrounding property market. So, uh, all for the best, prepare for the worst, lah, to be optimistic. Uh. To be optimistic, that's your advice uh, for them. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah, and majority is stand on the client's own shoes lah, to find out what they really need mm. in order to suggest them the, the house that more suitable to them. Mm. Because in Ipoh, some of the clients that buy a 500k house, they want to do investment. Yeah, so uh, nowadays investment like last time is different. Maybe last time the installment is very low. Mm. So your renter able to cover. But nowadays the installment is high. How you do the investment, maybe you need to shift to Airbnb. Uh, mm. The model, yeah, things like this. So what I, I hear from you is like... Uh hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and also ability to understand the trend is, is very crucial and very important as, as, as well. Yeah. 
Okay, that's that's good. What about uh June? What would you advise to the younger uh June? Let's you know, say, the you're uh, start if you are newbies to the real estate, I would suggest you go for NCC course. Okay, <laughs> enroll yourself. Uh, enroll into a right platform. Okay, and then get guidance from the mentor mm -hmm. or from the seniors. And then you must be very hardworking, no mm -hmm. doubt. And then keep on going for viewing. Failure is a a, a process. You must keep on trying. Don't give up. So eventually, after 10 years, you can be a state agent of the year like me. Okay, never give up. Yeah, work hard, never give up. I think that's the evergreen uh, foundations uh, advice for, for anybody. As long as you don't give up, one day, one day you will make it for very sure. Yeah. And uh, with all these rapid changes in the in the industries, right? How do you uh cope with all these changes, all these trends? You know, like uh things ever evolving. Like let's say, for example, in uh in Ipo Para, now now the trend is very different. Investments investment need is different. Appetite is different. Now it's like a lot of high rise buildings that are coming up. Then we talk about Airbnb right now. No longer just on the uh, on the old sub sales. Uh, area more younger people are actually coming back to to Ipoh. Now, how do you cope with all this trend and how do you manage and set yourself apart and have the strategies to capitalize this trends Jacqueline all this trend uh, then how do you cope 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 up with all these right so many changes over the many years uh in Ipoh alone then need to need to study the market needs do more homework calculations for the Airbnb and maybe my own self to find friends together to have a Airbnb, to rent a unit and do an Airbnb. We own self, we also experience it and able to speak it up more, uh, more genuine. Lah. We have more confidence on doing this, follow this trend. Yeah, be your own investors, you know, eat your own food. So it's like if you want people to invest in, in, in Airbnb, perhaps you and your team first invested in it and have it and experience it. How is it like? Uh? Mm. Yeah. Best best way to handle trend is to be part of the trend. It's good. What is is there any upcoming trend that you see that you are preparing for in uh in Ipo? Uh in Ipo upcoming trend. Uh? Uh, I think a lot of cafe is booming, FMB also booming. And I think Sunway, Sunway mm -hmm. and Axim, many of the I think many of the KL uh developer they're coming in as well. Like uh Axim they already come in to be the to do the Airbnb project, Stallions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it will be become a tourism place in Ipoh. It's not the peak yet, but I think in next five years will become peak. Uh, you you still see a lot of uh, transactions, a lot of hope. Uh, it bought itself, yeah. Yes, a lot. A lot of transactions. Uh, over there. That's that's good. Thanks, thanks, Jacqueline. June, what about you? what about you? How do you cope with all these uh, changes, or the trend, new things in the industry? Uh, basically, ever since last year, April onwards, we start to have ESG compliance, means more greens, more energy saving. Mm. And we have to read a lot of, uh, I mean, say the news uh, updates from time to time, you know, what are the industry compliance all, all about. So for those who are right to invest yourself or venture yourself into industry, you must know about the trend. So now today, the ESG compliance is so important, okay? So if you do not have this type of uh, skill or knowledge to guide your clients, they maybe couldn't get a grant for, or finance from banks or from uh, government sector. So must I ensure you have the right knowledge to deliver to them so that they, they will keep on trusting you and keep on buying from you. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think yeah, ESG, you know, is uh like almost like in the past we also talk about green buildings. Now we have ESG actually more requirement and more understanding in this uh space that is very much uh needed. So for June, your advice is to do your study, you know, do your work, do your homework so that you understand the industry as it grows. 
All right. So next, next thing is what is that? What what is the one uh, key lesson that you have learned in your career that you wish that you have known that very very early, so that you don't make that mistake. Uh, yeah. There is no time is good time now. <laughs> no time is good time. Yeah. Never. Make, uh, I think every um, I start my real estate a journey is quite late. Uh, so I think Jacqueline. It's much more younger than me. Mm. So you have a very bright future. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my 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 knowledge and my experience uh, gathered throughout the years uh, make me more uh, knowledgeable and people like, it's like a wine. The more older you are, the more... The more fine you are. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so when my age is, uh, I'm getting very old, okay? <laughs> It so that's why okay. I need to do industry. No more residential. <laughs> yeah. Residential is more towards like young people. They can vibrate that. Uh. But for me, I it's like a uh, achievement over the years that hey, I can transform myself from a, a residential player into industry. How far I can move, how far I can achieve, and how am I going to lead an example to the young people, especially my children. Yes. Would you encourage your children to be in the real estate industry? Yeah, I, I do encourage them, but they have to be like me, very hardworking. <laughs> <laughs> but depends on their 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 passions. My passions toward real estate is a lot. Yeah. From very young until now. Good, good, good. I think it's it's still back to the, the passions, huh? Yeah, so there's no better time than living in the presence to continue to uh uh to just uh treasure what we have, yeah, and work at the presence, uh, yeah. And of course, very important is our experience. No experience is wasted. It doesn't matter what age we are in, as long as we have that passions and uh purpose to really want to achieve what we want to achieve, I think eventually we will make it. Thanks, June, for the advice. Jackie. Um, I think I wish to know. When I start is the REA <laughs> to start studying the REA when the first year because now when after three four years it seems mm -hmm. like the it's very heavy load until only find out that when you starting your first year is only the most three years have a most time. Yeah, because you're, you're still figuring out what to do. That's why you have a lot of time. Now, after three and a half years, you kind of know what you need to, to do and you're definitely very busy in doing that. Yeah, and I think another thing is maybe uh, start building team mm -hmm. at the first year or maybe I wish to like uh, start my real estate maybe earlier, 10 years ago, so I can see the trend. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm able to see the trend which is uh, for the house in investment especially as the now nowadays the house price is very high so 10 years ago is a golden time for investment yeah if, if you're buying a sub sale when you're buying a second hand house or any house uh, yeah if you don't do it now like 10 years later when you talk about it then you'll say hey, you know 20 years ago is actually the better time to, to buy property I think the property will continue to evolve and we continue to uh, get more and more expensive, I think it's always better to, to do it uh, now when we have the capacity uh, to do so. So your advice to the younger generation is to make sure start early. Start early. Young. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. So you, you have a plan to actually start your own agency with uh, like going for REA right now for yourself? Uh, yeah, planning. Planning for that. For time management wise, still planning. Okay, that's that's good. Wishing you all the best for your uh REA license. We look forward to see that you starting your own agencies. And also, thank you, uh, June. Thank you for sharing your insights, like uh, for both of uh both of, both of your time, right? Thank you. Uh, thank so you, Nicholas. Thank you, Dr. Inchu. Thank you, okay, uh, KW Mali. Thank you for all of you who are watching us uh, live on Facebook and also on Zoom. Uh, give, do help me to give a warmest uh, thank you uh, to them. Text it on the live chat and also in our Zoom chat. So to appreciate for their time with us this morning. With that, thank you so much, uh, everyone. We look forward to see you again next Monday. Wishing you the best week ahead. God bless.
and take good care.